Okay, I know what you're thinking. Mr. Cole, is this not like... Is this not like the sixth video you've already made on Torque? Yeah, I know. It is a long chapter. Guess what? It ain't even over. There's like four more videos to go in this playlist. Long, long, long chapter on Torque. Uh, hey, go take it. Go take a calculus base course. It'll pop up in like three different chapters in there. It's like you'll do a chapter, skip a chapter, and all of a sudden, bam, torque, right back in there again. Well, we're continuing with more torque. You see, so far, you've done a bunch of torque questions. They were basic torque, FR questions. You've even done questions where you had like, wow, I even put a little wavy on my F there. I'm getting torqued up here. I've even done questions where you had FR plus FR minus FR. You've had multiple torques acting on a point, and you set them all equal to zero. So what is the rest of this chapter on torques then starting to consist of? Well, you did problems that were all in equilibrium so far. That means they were just sitting there. So what happens What happens when, here, let's go back. This, the rest of this chapter is pretty much about things like this. Let's draw a disk here. Wow, that's a really horrible looking disc, but I've been drawing a bunch of them lately. So let's say here's a disc. And you apply a force perpendicular to the radius of that disc. Well, if you keep pushing on that disc, what's going to happen? It's going to speed up and speed up and speed up. You're going to spin it. In other words, what do you do in a problem that's not equal to zero? What do you do in the problem that's actually starts spinning up and going faster and faster and faster and faster and faster? That's what we're looking at. Well, here you go. If you've got something in this chapter, you already kind of know something. In straight line world, we've got good old Newton, F equals MA. Well, I want you to get something. For every problem you have ever done in the world of straight lines, I promise you it has a cousin in circle world. So take a look. What is the circle world equivalent of MA? Well, instead of M, we're going to use the letter I because I, watch the video on moment of inertia. Moment of inertia not only takes in the mass, but it takes into account the shape of this object as well. And instead of A for straight line acceleration, we'll use an alpha. So the rest of this chapter is torque equals I alpha problems. Some of the problems are really as straightforward as, hey, just do I alpha. The harder questions, what you're going to do is go back in, and instead of torque, you're going to take FR that you already know, and you're going to set FR equal to I alpha and work a problem. Oh, good grief. What do you do if you work a problem there's more than one torque? Well, if the two torques are helping spin it, you'd go FR plus FR equals I alpha. What happens if one of the torques was holding back against it? In other words, well, if one kid was trying to push a merry-go-round that direction, the other kid was trying to push it the opposite direction. Well, both kids are going to make a torque, but you're going to subtract the difference from each other. Pretty much every one of these FR problems you did that were equilibriums, you could go back and set them equal to I alpha if the object began to rotate. And that's where this chapter comes into play at this point. I'm going to see if we can't do a problem. First example we've got, it's a baseball player. And this baseball player is going to do something weird. They're just going to pivot their arm at the elbow. So they're literally just going to throw the ball completely out of their elbow. Uh, if you were here in the room, I would simulate this action, but you would look very funny. Although if you've ever watched the game of cricket, they pivot straight out of the shoulder. Now, see, that would have been more entertaining, plus you'd learned about the game of cricket. But anyway, we've got a baseball player. They've got a mass, an object out in this hand out here. So they've got just a mass out here in this hand. Uh, the reason why this is significant, it says the forearm has no mass. I know, must be a really skinny kid. So the forearm is negligible in this question. And then we've got a mass out here on the end. The reason why that's important, the fact that this object is nothing but a mass I know that I is just going to be an MR square in this question. Now, it says the ball starts from rest, so this ball, somebody's going to throw this ball in an arcing motion. And it says that they start from rest. So there's zero meters per second here, 
And then they release the ball up at the top, and it's got a velocity of 30 meters per second. However, I cannot write the number 30 without making it look horrific. Anyway, and it says all this happens in a time of 0.3 seconds. So well, that's fascinating. It tells me that the mass of that ball, I'm going to write that here, M equals 0.150 kg. It also needs, if it needs to tell me radius. I don't think it ever told me. Oh, it's in the picture. It says that this forearm is 35 centimeters. So that's going to be my radius. Now I'm going to go ahead and write 0.35 meters down. Get rid of that centimeters. So this is my R. This radius of rotation is my R for MR squared. It says A, find the angular acceleration of the arm. Well, look at something. Look at what's give us. It gave us a VO of 0. It gave us a V of 30 and a time of 0.3 seconds. V is equal to VO plus AT. Good night. 30 equals 0 plus A. 0.3 is time. So I end up here with, let's see, that's 0.3. That's 3 tenths. So that would be 300 divided by 3, which would be 100. So my acceleration is 100 meters per second squared. Now that's great. I have found plain old straight line acceleration. This problem asks me to find alpha, circle world acceleration. That's cool. I know that A is equal to, this was chapter 7, R alpha. So all I got to do is 100 equals 0.35. That was the radius we measured up here on this guy's arm. There's my alpha. 100 divided by 0 0.35 is 286. Do you remember the unit for alpha? Oops, you couldn't see any of that. I apologize. 286 rads per second square. So there is my alpha, rads per second square. This problem also has a B part. It says find the torque. Well, torque is equal to FR. It didn't tell me FR. But I already know alpha. And I know that torque is equal to, what's your brand new equation? I alpha. So I've got an I alpha. This is just a forearm, so I is going to be M R square alpha. So in this case, 0.15 times 0.35 square times 286. So if we can't punch this one in the calculator, 0 0.15 times 0.35 square. I know it's exciting watching somebody do calculations. 5.25, so 5.26. And a torque is a Newton dot meter, and FR is all it is. And that's all there is to the baseball player question. Now, I'm going to do one more question that's a little bit of the harder one. Now, again, a lot of the times this problem will ask you to find force. If it wants you to find force, you just found torque. All you have to do is FR equals 5.26. You already know the radius. Shoot, let's just do it. That'd be 3.5 is the radius. You actually just found the, wow, that's a good looking set of numbers, ain't it? The paper's bent down here. 5.26. So 5.26 divided by 0.35, 15 newtons. Turns out, wow, I just wrote one. 15 newtons of force is our answer. And again, I didn't ask that, but I was just showing that you could. If you know torque, you can also just do an FR. All right, let's do one more question. Now, this one is like one of those that's probably guaranteed you're going to see. It's called the, I call it the well bucket question. It's a connected object where you've got like a cylinder. Now, here's the thing. You've done problems in the past trying to look for a sheet of paper I could write on. You've done problems in the past that look like this, where you had like a pulley and you had a weight on each side. If you don't know how to do those, go back to my chapter four. It'd be our unit four. It'd be objects that are in, I don't remember. I think they're called static questions is what, no, I call these Newton second law questions or connected objects. 
Well, you're doing another connected object. If you can do this problem, you can do this problem. Matter of fact, what some of your teachers will do to make it hard, and I will even for the bonus, is I will take and combine what you're learning new with this old question on here. B1, first thing I'm going to do is this. I want to draw a free body diagram for this bucket hanging here. You see that bucket? Da 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 dash dash. Da da dash. What would that bucket look like? Well, let's see. That bucket has got an MG going straight down. So the bucket has an MG going straight down. Uh, I'm not going to call it M1 because I'm going to use a little M. This, it's just common. I'm going to use a little M for the bucket and a big M for the thingy up here. And I've got a rope attached to the top, so I've got a tension going in this direction. We should be able to write the equation for that bucket instantly. It's the same as those old problems you've done. The equation for that bucket, sum of the forces Y would be equal to T minus MG equals it's falling on the connected object. What you do when it's falling equals negative MA. And that's the way I'll work it, and it'll keep working. If somebody argues this with you, tell them to go back and watch my Chapter 4 videos. And then if not, hey, get over it. This is not new. You already know how to do this. The only thing that's new is this doggone well bucket up here. Well, let's take a look at that well bucket. So here, or not the well bucket, but this axle, this big disc, uh-oh, I said it, disc, cylinder at the top of the well. Here is this big cylinder at the top of the well. And what happens is this rope is pulling on it. So you've got a rope that's pulling on it. All of a sudden, look, you've got a tension. Something is pulling this, and it's pulling it at a radius. Uh-oh. You've got a force pulling something at a radius. That means you've got a torque in this question. So now in this problem, and I'll show you what the only two physics is, you've got to recognize you've got two torques. This thing's going to speed up. It's not equal to zero. So your torque, and this is where most people go FR equals I alpha. And I'm going to do something. Since it's a tension pulling it, instead of FR, I'm going to write TR. By the way, if you were asked to identify the physics in this question, this is the physics. Go ahead and look at what we're going to do. I'll finish this problem. If you're good at algebra, you could quit here probably. I'm going to solve this equation for T and substitute it into this one. This question usually always wants the same thing. What is A? It might ask for T as well, but A is what you need to find first. And now all I'm going to do is solve this and substitute. So let's get one more sheet of paper, and hopefully we're about to be to the end of this thing. So I'm going to write down my two equations one more time. One more time. Oh, sorry. Broke out in a little daft punk. You don't just do that every day. So I've got two equations. T minus MG equals negative MA. And then the other object has got the equation TR equals I alpha. Well, here's what I need to do. That's a disk at the top of the well. So I'm going to write TR equals a disk, a solid cylinder, one half. I'm going to write big MR square. And I'm writing big M to represent big M is this big cylinder up here. And now I've got little m represents the bucket. Now, that's alpha. You see, here's the problem. I'm looking for A, and I've got circle world acceleration here and straight line world acceleration here. So what I want to do is this. I want to get A into this equation. Well, I know that A is equal to R alpha, so that means, let's look at something. TR would be equal to 1 half big M R square, and alpha would be the same as A over R. Hey, something cool happens. Check this out. That R cancels the square, and then that R cancels the R. Look at what we're left with. T equals one-half big M A. And now all I'm going to do is substitute that right here. So this is going to be one-half 
m a minus m g equals negative m a. Now it's just like problems you've done in the past. I want everything with an a on one side, everything with a on the other side. So one half m a plus little m a. I will move the m g to the other side. So that's equals m g. Remember the little m is my in this question, I had the big cylinder, that's my big M. The little M represents the bucket, I swear that's an M and not a W. The little M represents the object hanging down here. Factor out your A. A times one half M plus M equals little M G. And I said we gotta put some numbers into this thing. So what we got here, the bucket is two. I need to know how big that thing is. Oh, it says it's three. So the bucket's two, the mass is three. So I'm going to plug in A times one half of three plus two equals two times 9.8 on the other side. Let's see. So this is one and a half plus two. So this is 3.5A equals. 2 times 9.8 is 19.6. Little division. 19.6 divided by 3.5, 5.6. And just like the problems you did in the past where you had something like this, your answer better come out less than 9.8. Because gravity is what is accelerating the system in the first place. But anyway, uh, usually this problem will want you to find the A, and then it'll want you to come back and plug it in here and find what your tension is. And that's all there is to it. Hope you have good luck and season's greetings and all that other kind of stuff, even though I'm recording this in March. But anyway, bye.